And oh yes, we are back. Hello everybody. So as I said, oh damn, I just took my glasses off. I'm thinking they're still on my face. Anyway, as I said, you know, on my video that I just put up, that um, I'm pretty much here to do the Empire review for you guys. I took my notes, but I'm going to pretty much do what I did in the last video, but I'm actually going to stick through and watch the, the entire episode through with y'all. So it's going to be like a back and forth kind of thing, but I have most of my notes. So let's go ahead and let's get into it. So for this episode, we start off with Hakeem and Takima. They are at the red carpet event. I think it's for I think it's for some type of reward show. I don't know what, but um, it's, they're just at some red red carpet event. And then the reporter was pretty much you know she addressed Tiana you know as Tiana this new hot pop star or whatever. Then when it came to Hakeem, she was like, oh yeah, the son of Lucius Lion. And the both of them looked at each other, and then she she quickly addressed the reporter and let her know that he has a name. So anyway, uh, Hakeem pretty much announced that he has a new video and a new song coming out, the Drip Drop song that we see in this episode, and pretty much just, you know, promoting it and getting people, make sure people watch the video and go out and buy the single. So uh, pretty much later, we see them in the car with Hakeem's crew, and they pretty much drop Tiana off because tomorrow that following day she has to be in the studio, whether recording or dance studio, she has to be in the studio all day tomorrow, so she really doesn't, she really can't um, stay out too late. So uh, pretty much, you know, her and Hakeem share a little romantic, romantic moment or whatever. She gets out, goes to her apartment, and then him and his crew drive off. Now, when she goes into her apartment, we then see that she actually has a side piece. And this side piece happens to be female. She has a girlfriend. A white girlfriend, might I add you. And the girlfriend's name, from what I was seeing on the, uh, on the internet, because I'm subscribed to Empire, they have a YouTube channel. What I'm seeing on the internet, they have, uh, her name is India. So, um, I know it's, yeah, it's India. Yeah, that's her name. So pretty much, you know, they, you know, pretty much get down and get down and dirty and do the damn thing. So next we see Anika and Lucius. They are uh, at their house. And he is, Lucius is surprising Anika with, I guess Anthony Hamilton is one of her favorite singers. So he surprised her with Anthony Hamilton having him um, in the, in a dining, not the dining area, but in the banquet hall, I guess you can say, or the living room, whatever they call that room, and he is pretty much on the piano playing a song, which is actually a part of this, which was actually a part of, uh, t of this episode, you know, EP that they put on iTunes, they put all the music on iTunes, so the song that Anthony Hamilton was playing, was, that is the song that, you know, is on the EP on iTunes. And pretty much, you know, they dance all, you know, romantically and stuff like that, like ballroom dancing. And pretty much he, you know, gets on one knee and, well, after, well, before he gets on one knee. I'm sorry, I'm all over the place. I'm still excited from watching the show. Anyway, uh, he vows to fight this disease, L ALS, with all that he got and that he wants to make the most out of his life. Which then, you know, which then prompts him to get on one knee and then he pulls out the ring uh, from his pinky finger and, you know, pretty much puts it on Anika's ring finger. She likes the ring, and then he tells her that she can't really uh, wear it officially. She can't wear it officially until they announce to both of their families that they're engaged and about to get married. Now, my th now this is a side note. My thing is, I feel that you know he only has three years left to live, and at, at this rate, with all this stress that he's putting on himself, this motherfucker might have less if that's the case. And then on top of that, I just feel that. You know, once he makes this announcement to his side of the family, Cookie and his sons, I feel like that's going to change the whole dynamic because now not only do the sons have to fight each other, now everybody, including Cookie, has to look at her and go, damn. So this is really going to be, I hope later on the family tries to group up, you know, the sons and Cookie. I hope that they all try to, like, you know fucking surf a team or something, group up with some shit and try to go and, and try to, you know, do something because if Lucius does die and he is, you know, married to her and there's no prenup involved and I don't even think he mentioned that he didn't mention the prenup at all on this episode, I believe that he will, I mean, everything will go to her and if that's the case, well, god damn, like, for real, if that's the case, then what the hell were these sons fighting for? Like, that's just going, whew, I feel like that's going to throw the dynamic completely off. I feel like that would just throw it completely off. I mean, y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments about that, because I think that 
if no prenup is involved and he dies all of a sudden or somebody shoots his ass one or the other and all that stuff goes to Anika it's like well damn what was the point of them you know what was the point of you pitting the sons against each other like Oh man, this is why they call this is why they call Lucius the Devil anyway. Uh, anyway, moving back to the review. Uh, next we see Cookie and Jamal going to the studio in the hood somewhere, and you know she just doesn't feel right about the area, the environment, and the space, and the type of people that are hanging around. And they see bullet holes in one of the glass windows, the glass doors to uh, to the studio. And pretty much, you know, he of course Jamal still has a point to prove, which is okay. It's okay. He has he still has a point to prove that, you know, he's his own man and he doesn't need Lucius's money. Even when Cookie had offered him and Michael money in the last yeah, in the last episode, you know, uh she offered him money, you know, to fix, get the place get his new place fixed up. He still he refused to take that because he knows that that money came from Lucius and he still refuses to take Lucius's money. Now my thing is this, it is okay to be prideful, but to an ex to an I feel like in this case to an extent because you're a musician, and I mean, and a, and a, you're a signed musician. I, let me, let's get that correct. You're a signed musician, but you're refusing a check. You're refusing money from your mom, even though the money is from your father, but it's in your mom's possession. Therefore, it is now your mother's. You're refusing her money. You know. You can only you can only afford one day in the studio, which really is all he needed for this song, which is actually a good song, by the way. But I feel that to an extent. You're a little too prideful. I see it's that type of it's being that prideful that gets people fucked up in the end because, you know, Again, you're a signed artist. Let's just put that out there. You're a signed artist, not to an indie label, but a man. Ain't nothing wrong with an in independent label, but you're a signed artist. To you're signed to a mainstream record label. Like, again, I mean, it must be nice. You know, it must be nice being Michael because he just. I we still don't know his. We don't. St we still don't know his place of work. We still don't know. Listen. No further comment on that. Anyway, uh, while in the studio, while well, while Jamal prepares to go record, she gets a text from Agent Carter letting uh, letting her know that they're outside. And pretty much, you know, she goes, she leaves Jamal. He's like, oh wait, why are you leaving? Da 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 da. Why are you going, child? If only you, listen. If only you knew. If only you knew the stuff that your mama is going through. If only you knew. Because I'm pretty. We are pretty sure you would be the only guy to actually give a damn about her. Anyway. If something were to happen. Anyway, um, yeah, so they go outside. My bad, y'all. I don't have my glasses on because I got tired of that glare from the, you know, the part of the webcam in my face. I want you guys to see my eyes. Doesn't look good. Anyway, um, yeah. So, yeah, they meet out. Her and, her and Agent Carter meet outside, and they pretty much talk for a little bit. And, you know, she basically says that she doesn't like talking about that part of her life. She doesn't like talking about the past, if you will. And, you know, it's just like, well, she has to, in a sense, because she has to testify. And pretty much, you know, during her testimony, witness testimony, statement, whatever the hell they're calling it, you know, she'll be safe, she'll be protected. So they go, they do that or whatever. It is what it is. Next, we see Hakeem, Lucius, and, and Hakeem, Lucius, Anika, and Andre having a meeting about um, Hakeem's new video. And he plays them a few, a little, a couple of seconds of his new song. And, you know, he pretty much says that he doesn't want to win the game. He wants to change the game. And so pretty much, you know, he wants to be like the next 50 Cent with the vitamin water, uh, Dr. Dre with the Beats headphones. He wants to do what they did, but in his own way. And he wants to not be known as the son of Lucius Lyon. No, he wants to be known as Hakeem Lyon and be and you know, have, you know, have the title switched around. It'll be like, you know, the father of Hakeem Lyon, basically. I mean, of ha the father of Lucius Lyon. Who shit? The father of Lucius Lyon. Anyway, um, as they're discussing the video, Andre says that, you know, with the auditors always checking in, checking in on how much money they're spending on their artists, he pretty much, you know, is saying that, oh yeah, this video, you know, in the business terms is over budget. So uh, Anika and Hakeem step out and they go somewhere to, I guess, discuss more about the video. 
And Lucia just pretty much lets Andre know, look, if you can't get the money for this video, I don't know what your purpose is in this company. And see, that right there just shows you that Lucius is mentally and verbally and even physically, he's pretty much abusive all the way around. And with Andre, he knows how to really get him because he knows Andre really, really wants Empire. Or so he claims that he really wants Empire. But we all know, you know, it's the, the snake who's controlling this who really wants Empire just to have the money and the power. So pretty much... um. With that being said, he, uh, Andre then goes and meets with his wife, Rhonda, and she pretty much shows him, Tiana, and India at this photo shoot for models. She shows him the two of them kissing, and, uh, yeah, she shows the two of them kissing and making out and records it on her phone. And she's saying that, oh, God loves us. God loves us, child. Not even the devil loves you. I don't know what spirits y'all are praising to, but God is not listening and the devil is pretty much declining your messages. So I don't know who loves y'all, but it damn sure ain't God or the devil. It's neither nor. So anyway, you know, they pretty much plan on using that video footage of, oh shit, I almost called her Hakeem. Anyway, they use the video footage of Tiana and in India against Hakeem. Later we see Cookie testifying, and while she's testifying, she has a flashback of when she sold crack to this um, undercover agent. He was a federal agent, and he's the guy that Frank Gathers had shot right in front of her, mind you, and we pretty much see uh, how Cookie got taken down, how she got caught. And once she finds out that the guy that got killed was a fed, she storms out, and she pretty much t asks Carter why she didn't know that he was a fed. And then she tells her, do you know what type of animal kills a federal agent? Then asks her, you know, well, she then asks her, can you protect me, yes or no? And Agent Carter doesn't answer. And, you know, Cookie's just like, well, I'm a dead bitch walking in. And she just, you know, gets on the elevator. Now, I'm going to pause that. Did y'all catch when she went to the first elevator? She completely editing. If you really pay close attention to editing, she completely missed the button for the elevator. And, like, she hit the, she hit the, um, the, sil the you know, the little silver part under the button. She completely missed the button. And then I guess they was pretty much like, all right, well, we're going to wrap this, wrap this scene or whatever. So she uh, went to the other elevator. Just in case y'all did not catch that, she completely missed the first button. She completely missed the button and hit the uh, bottom part. I'm just like, did anybody else see that? Because she literally just like, I'm just like, wait a minute. Oh, oh y'all did not just catch that. But anyway, um, when she gets on the elevator, she has a look of being frightened because that's what she is. And, you know, yeah, she's just very frightened because she doesn't know what this guy would do to her, her family, her, well, I really want to say her son because the other two, child, I, mm, Andre is too ashamed of her and Hakeem don't like her. So I feel like she's really more concerned about what's going to happen to her and Jamal because somehow, some way, this guy can find out, you know, find out where she lives, hell, find out where him and Michael live and kill them, all three of them, and make it look like an accident. Or, you know, kill them and make it make them disappear. That's all I'm going to say. Anyway, uh, Andre lets Lucius know that he got the money for the budget. I mean, the shit. He got the money for the budget for the video. And basically the strategy was they're going to take money out of Tiana's promotional, um, promotional budget and put that into Hakeem's video. And the plus side is get Tiana on the song and in the video. But of course, Lucius lets him know you're going to have to talk to your mother because she is Tiana's manager. So we'll get to that in a second. Vernon tells Lucius that they need a doctor to sign this key man policy, which will, you know, state that Lucius is, Lucius is in good health. Because I think the, uh, the people at the IPO uh, department, whatever... I think that they know he has an illness. Maybe he told them and we don't know. Maybe, you know, maybe he told them and so they want to make sure he's in good health. And, uh, or maybe that's, maybe that's like a, a standard policy that you have to sign this thing whenever you're going public with the company just in case something happens to you or they just want to make sure you're in good health. Because it's like, you know, he can no longer keep telling them that, oh, I'm just going to, Oh, we're just going to let our, you know, I'm just going to let one of my sons get the company. No, you can no longer do that. You got to have some type of documentation about your health. This ain't about three of them. This is about you. 
So anyway, um, he tells Vernon about the Anika and the ring and her and her, and about her big time doctor of a father. I mean, big time, you know, father, doctor, whatever. And you know, then he talks about his uh engagement, his previous engagement and engagement party, you know, with cooking and all that stuff. And um, how the anniversary is this week and blah, blah, blah. Hmm, hold on. Hmm, hello? Yeah. All right, dude. Just all right, ring, the, ring the bell. I will be right back, you guys. Y'all just, you know, of course, do what y'all do best because y'all gonna have to skip this. God damn. Anyway, hold on. Anyway, I'm back, y'all. So, yeah, where did I leave off? Oh, yeah, he told him about the ring and the engagement, all that good stuff. Alright, um, so, yeah, Cookie is, a, oh, yeah, so Cookie is on her way out to go back to the studio to where Jamal is at, and in the midst of doing this, she, uh, sees a rose, which was the signature, uh, which was the, like, signature stamp on the bag of dope that her and Lucia used to sell back in the day, and in her mind, when she sees it at her doorstep, her door, on her doormat, in her mind, she thinks that Frank knows that she testified against him. She ID'd him as the killer, and so she completely goes into a panic mode. And when she goes into this panic mode, she is just, you know, freaking out. She calls Agent Carter. She doesn't pick up. She lets her. She leaves her voicemail, letting her know somebody is trying to kill me. You know, help her out, whatever. Uh, pretty much in the midst of this, she grabs a wad of money, five thousand dollars in cash, and she grabs her gun, puts it in her purse, grabs her hat. You know, puts her hat, you know, slants it, so, you know, you got to cover the face or whatever. And as soon as she steps out, Andre is at the door. He picked up the road. She gets scared. She then, you know, pulls him into the, and she pretty much pulls him in and just lets him know, you know, get in here. And, um, you know, she asked him, were well, you the one that left that road? He's like, no, nah, this was on your doorstep. Anyway, they talk or whatever, and um, he is pretty much begging her for, to, begging for her to listen to him because he's under a lot of stress and pressure from his father, blah, blah, blah. And pretty much she does. She wants to know what was this whole secret board that she keeps hearing about every time big money comes up. And she he lets her know about the board. And she was just like, well, here's the thing. You get me on the board with, with you know, your father, you, Vernon, and whoever else is on the board. You get me on the board. And I will, and you know, Tiana can do the video and the song. And she pretty much told him to work his magic. Now, I don't know if he did get her on the board. I think he probably did because because Tiana and um, T, uh, Tiana is on the she Tiana is in the in, she's Tiana is on the God damn, I'm so sorry, y'all. Tiana is on the song and she's in the video. So you know, she's in she's on the she's on the song and she's in the video. So clearly they worked something out. And then on top of that. They took her, they took Tiana's promotional money, I guess, you know, the, I guess, because I'm not really that, I mean, I know enough about the industry, but not too much, so I guess the promotional money is like, I guess, to get Tiana's face and her image out there and get her songs out there, and I guess the promotional money that they're talking about is pretty much Tiana's budget, I don't know if they took all of Tiana's budget for this video, I hope not. But they probably took a little bit out in order to boost up the, in order to put that into the video budget. Because to be honest, this video, like just from looking at it, it is expensive. You got the green screen, you know, the special effects, and you got that water in the background with the bed scene. It's just like, I mean, I, I ugh, all I can say is I hope you make that money back. Cause god damn, that was a lot of money. But anyway. I'm about to put my glasses back on, you guys. Uh-oh, what's happening now? Anyway, so yeah, um, Hakeem is on the set, and, you know, he takes a break, and his friends are just like, well, hey, weren't we supposed to be going somewhere? Like, weren't we supposed to be in Miami this weekend? Because they would rather be there than on the video set. So pretty much, you know, 
all this crazy stuff is going on and all this, you know, all this chaos, all this, you know, talking going on, blah, 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 whatever. And um, I think that this is also when we see Tiana in the back. She's on, she's on the other, it's like this big, I don't even know, it's very, the dynamics of this building is just so, it's so kind of complicated at times. Anyway, I guess Tiana is behind the scenes, um, you know, dancing or whatever, just, you know, getting her dance moves right for the song with the choreographer. And Rhonda, Cookie's assistant, she is on set making sure that, every, that Tiana is taken care of and making sure Hakeem is, I guess, behaving, acting right or whatever because Cookie is absent. So in her place is Portia, her assistant. She's just making sure everything is right. Everything is on lockdown. Everything is good. Da, 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 da. You need anything, let me know. So anyway, in the midst of doing this, and I think uh, I might be a little bit all over the place at this point. I apologize if I am. But anyway, y'all know me. Anyway, um, so yeah, in the midst of doing this, you know, while Hakeem is shooting his video, uh, Portia and her, Portia and Hakeem's crew are sitting over, sitting over at the table, just, you know, eating, hanging out, and Portia is, you know, scrolling, she's just scrolling through her phone, just, you know, on the internet, not really doing nothing, when she sees on, um, well, before that happens, Andre behind the scene, he calls Rhonda and tells her to, you know, okay, now's a great time to, you know, now's a great time. You put this, uh, put, put up that video on every blog site that's following Tiana and Hakeem, and she does it. The first site that we see was the Perez Hilton site, and she uploads the video, and he says to make sure that she does it to where they cannot retrace the IPO, or no, not the IPO, whoops, wrong, ter wrong terminology. He says make it to where they can't trace it to her. In other words, where they cannot trace the IP, the, you know, IP address, which is like, you know, the stuff, www. you know, all the coding and all this stuff, make sure they cannot trace it back to her. Clearly, she took a couple of computer classes in college because she knows how to do it to where they cannot trace that all the way back to her. And uh, pretty much she does it. And then Portia on the phone, just, you know, doing nothing really, just, you know, lollygagging. She then sees, you know, the picture and stuff in the video. And, you know, the, she says, oh, it's about to get hot up in here. And then Hakeem's crew, they all slash over and they're like, well, what's going on? And then when they do that, they see what's going on. And they're like, oh, Hakeem going to be pissed. And he got off the bed. You know, the, they put the, they, you know, cut. They doing a break or whatever. And he like, I'm going to be pissed about what? He walks over, snatches the phone from Portia. She was like, give me my phone. Give, give me my phone. And then he sees, the, he sees, you know, his girlfriend with another woman. And... Everybody from the video girls on the bed to Portia and Hakeem crew, everybody got a look on their face like, so what you going to do? And they looking like they, they got the look of what you going to do, and they all look shocked. Those are the two looks that everybody got on their face, like, and, and confused, too, because don't nobody really know what's going on. So anyway, Hakeem, he puts his... Anyway, Hakeem puts his, Hakeem puts his shirt on, and he goes to talk to Tiana... And pretty much he, um, yeah, he goes to talk to Tiana, and he pretty much is saying, you know, he pretty much. Anyway, y'all, excuse all that chaos going on. Anyway, um, Hakeem goes to talk to Tiana while she's in the middle of, you know, dancing, doing her dance and stuff and practicing. And he was just like, he was pretty much like, you know, what's up? What's going on? You know, he pretty much was like, what's going on? What's this I see? What's this I see on the Internet? You got a girlfriend all this stuff, you know, he just pretty much like, hey, what's going on, what's really good, you know what I'm saying, like, what's really good, like, you know, my girlfriend, my girl ain't supposed to be kissing no other girl, and it's like, it's funny, because you mad that, here's my thing, this is a sad piece, this, no, not a sad piece, whoops, this is a sad note, it's funny that you're mad because your girl has a sad piece that happens to be another girl, but, it's like, it's funny that, it, it's funny that, you know, that's going on, and, you know, it's funny that, oh, oh my God, y'all, this is ridiculous. This is just ridiculous. I, please excuse all this. Please excuse all this, y'all. This is, this was so unplanned. This is just all this shit. I just, you know, God damn, I should not be dealing with this shit. So that you did that video. Ha. So let me just go on here. I'm going to uh, had to send people my love, my love. Anyway, y'all, what the fuck was I? Oh, yeah. It's funny how Hakeem got mad at her for having a side piece, even though, the, and the side piece is a woman, 
but you have really he has two side pieces because if y'all check the and this is I mean you know okay Wikipedia is not really a credible source but they have like the list of characters on the show and according to them Macy and if you go on I internet movie database IMDB that acronym it always confuses me anyway if you go on there they actually have Macy Gray listed too and she's gonna be playing Hakeem's second older lover so whenever she comes in down the line there's that so it's like you have two side pieces but we have only seen one for right now so you're getting mad at Tiana because she got somebody and that you know your, your girlfriend is bisexual by the way here's the thing you all all of y'all are in the entertainment industry and to be honest with you all who isn't screwing somebody else of the opposite or the same sex who isn't who doesn't have sad multiple sad pieces who isn't you know you know what I'm saying who isn't cheating on who the happiest couples you you know anybody can crop their can you know of course the Instagram socialites anybody can crop their life to look however they want it to look but you never know what's really going on in a person's family or in a person's home you know what I'm saying so anyway you know they they pretty much walk away from each other after after arguing in front of everybody and Andre then puts into motion his second move he's on the phone talk first off he pretty much talked about Jamal like a dog he was like what, what is this gay ass doing over here at this hood ass studio and he's talking shit on the phone while some 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 basically some opportunist ass niggas who are part of Hakeem's crew they overhear this they go over to the studio and uh, where Jamal is at and they pretty much you know proceed to go over there and rob, and rob them looking for a come up so they do this they do this and uh, pretty much I'm so sorry I don't got to talk louder just you know this extra shit is going on anyway y'all they please try to ignore it so they um so these dudes go over to the studio where Hakeem is at looking for this twelve thousand dollar watch which Hakeem is is not wearing and twenty thousand dollars pair of shoes which he doesn't which he doesn't have on. I am so sorry, y'all. That. Yeah. Yeah, my mom. Come on, Lake Grove. This Lake Grove. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just go over there. I'm sorry about that, y'all. I. No, my mom. Come on out. Um, I'm sorry about that. Where was I at? Yeah. So Andre pretty much set up Jamal to get robbed, and. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. She taking care of it. That's all right. Just stand here. Um, yeah, Jamal. Yeah, Andre we'll set up. Jam now, yeah, well, just to go. Andre's pretty much set up Jamal to be robbed, and um. Andre pretty much set up Jamal to be robbed, and uh, in the midst of them getting robbed, some it will. They well they it was an attempt robbery. It wasn't like nobody got anything really stolen. It was an attempt robbery and pretty much um what the fuck? It it was an attempt robbery and in the midst of this one of the musicians, backup guys, he got shot in the arm and with this happening uh in the midst of this, I'm so sorry, I'm kind of all over the place. Some sh trying to wrap my head back into it uh, Jamal rec uh, Jamal recognized the guy and when he recognized him he stood up even with a gun in his face like j at this point y'all Jamal he is not really taking no sh he ain't taking no shorts he ain't he ain't got time for the for the fuck shit he is pretty much you know he just is he's, he's kind of over it at this point hmm 
All right, hold on. Can you get back to All right, y'all. Uh, I am really sorry for all these distractions. Anyway, in the midst of it, yeah, you know, Jamal pretty much, he don't really give a damn at this point. Like, he, I don't even want to say he's a true artist, but he was really showing that he is a man. Like, the uh, motherfucker got a gun in his face. He ain't backing down. Child, god damn. That's all I can say. You will never, you'll probably never see, Lu you'll probably never see Lucius, Hakeem, or Andre do any of that. He just, a gun in your face and you fucking stood up. All right. Anyway, um, pretty much the guy, I think his name is, I want to say either Tyreek, Tyree, it's either Tyreek or Tyree, it's one of those two. He, um, the owner of the studio, he came out with, uh, with a 12-gauge shotgun, and he pretty much said, you know, you can make this an attempted robbery or a multiple homicide, yo, pick, and he pretty much kicked the guys out. And, you know, basically as a result of the dude getting one of the one of his guys getting shot, he pretty much told Jamal, all right, this session is over. You know, if it's one of my enemies that roll up in here, you know, that's another story. But somebody roll up in here looking for you. I just can't have that. I just. I can't have that. So he pretty much gets on the phone with Cookie. Now, mind you, all after Cookie had left the apartment, after Andre left, she pretty much hopped in a cab. And, of course, the guy was being racist towards her. He was like, oh, you know, you people always get in my cab and always start trouble. He he shut up real quick when she, you know, showed him that $100 bill. Anyway, he left, and he um he uh, he uh took her all the way to Philadelphia, from New York to Philadelphia. God damn. He, that was a long ride. She goes to her sister, Carol. Carol is her younger sister. And I think if you listen closely, she calls her K.O. I guess that was like a nickname back in the day. She probably used to, you know, knock people out. So that's why she calls her K.O. because I think that's her nickname. Anyway, um, they talk or whatever about the whole rose at her doorstep and how that was, how that's a signature of Frank Gathers when he's about to kill somebody, like how he plays mental games with you before he kills you. And pretty much, um, you know, she pretty much, her and her sister are talking and they just pretty much, you know, it's just like, well, what you going to do? What you want to do? You know, her sister grabs her coat. They get in the, uh, they get in the limo. They head back to New York. Now, she's pretty much on the phone. Like, she's on, like, I think three different phone calls. I really want to say two. Uh, no, wait, let me see. She was talking to Portia, Jamal. Yeah, she, and Tiana. Yeah, she was on three different calls. So you got Portia telling her about the stuff that happened with Tiana. Then you got Tiana, you know, talking about the whole thing that happened as well and her and Hakeem arguing. And, you know, when Cookie saw her, she was like, God damn. Yeah, she, when she went through her tablet, she was like, God damn. Like, you know, you're a freak and I don't judge, but we can use this. This can actually be pub publicity. We can use this to elevate you. We can use this to our advantage. So don't worry about it. Then she got uh, then she got Jamal on the phone letting him know, you know, and she she pretty much was talking to her sister while talking to Jamal, talking about I got Hitman, I got to take care of, I got Hitman and uh, the feds after me and all this other stuff. And he's like, Hitman, wait, 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 what you talking about? She's like, don't worry about, don't, don't worry about that. Just you know, let her hear the song, and then you know while he was while he was playing the while he was playing the song, he um pretty much while he was playing the song, he pretty much um. Mm, damn, what happened? My bad, y'all. I'm drawing a blank. I pretty much, this is actually, okay, y'all. This is a sad note and a distraction. So as I'm watching the show right here, I'm really not watching it. Like, I just have it playing in the background. It's on mute, by the way, because I don't need YouTube snatching my channel down. Anyway, um, because I don't need YouTube snatching my channel down. So, you know, I'm pretty much doing this from my memory. Anyway, like I was saying... Cookie was on the phone pretty much. She was handling everything like, you know, like a boss really should. And to, to be honest, I wish Cookie was my manager. I have nobody. I'm managing myself. But that's another story for another day. Anyway, 
Um, she was just, you know, delegating every situation here and there. Boom, boom, boom. Da, da, da. I got this. So they, you know, they take care of that. And, you know, Jamal does, she, she, she hears the song and she's like, you know, okay, you talking during the intro, you know, cut that out. That's very dated. That's what people used to do back in the day. You know, this is new times now. She's really, for her to be, for her to have been gone for 17 years, she knows so much about this industry. It blows your mind sometimes. You wouldn't even, you wouldn't even know, you, you forget the fact that she was gone for 17 years. You forget the fact she was gone. So, you know, she just told him, cut out that part when you're talking in the intro, just go right into the song, change the beat up, because you know people will get real bored, real bored, real quick. Change the beat up, and you know, all that other stuff they take care of. So, before she gets to the studio, her and her sister Carol make a stop at one of their cousin's house, and he's a he, he's pretty much one of the hitmen, you know, the hitman pretty much. And she pays him $5,000. And at first he's like, you know, you ain't even got to do that because we family. But I guess Carol told her, go ahead and just pay him, you know, just out of just the, just because, you know, you really need this help. So she pays him to go take care of one of Frank Gavin's dudes, and which he does. Unfortunately, we'll get to that. And then she heads off to the studio. I guess they, I guess she dropped Carol back off. I guess they made a round trip, a round trip, dropped Carol back off. Boom. Then take, then take Cookie to the studio. She listens to the, she comes in, listens to the song, and she's like, okay, it's good, but it sounds like you hiding behind the, the beat. The you have to be over the beat. And she, you know, tells the guy fix that. And he's like, you know, it's cool, it's all cool, Mama. Like, you know, and they, they fix the beat up. They fix it, arrange it. His voice is now, you know, his voice is here. This is the beat. And it's like, it's no longer like the beat is covering him. He's, you know, there we go. There's no, there's like no battle when, when you hear the song. There's no like vocal and production battle, if that makes sense to y'all. Anyway, uh, pretty much long story short, after all that is said and done, pretty much, you know, Hakeem still refuses to mess with Tiana because she's, you know, bisexual or whatever. And Lucius just lets him know, oh, what's better than having one girlfriend, two? And it's just like, is it just me or do, like, do, do y'all find it, here's another question for y'all in the comment section. Do y'all find it weird that men have such a attraction and, like, a fetish of seeing two girls together? Like, I, I, I just, I, I just never understood that. I never under, I never understood that, like, I just never understood that. I just, I never, I never understood that. I really never understood that. That just, um, that was, that's just very, it's just, I'm sorry, that just took me out for a second, because it's just like, like, you, you know, it's just, it's kind of, I, I don't know, it's almost like hypocritical in a sense, because it's like, you know, Tiana is bisexual, so she's part straight, she's part gay, and you know, you're okay, like, Lucius is okay with that, but he got a problem with Jamal and his sexuality, I, I just don't, I don't know, I don't know, you guys, it just took me back for a second, because I'm like, so you are right with Tiana and her girlfriend, you know, I guess because they're not related to you or whatever, you okay, but your son, oh, he can't be that, and it's just like, the fuck? I, I don't know, y'all. Anyway, so yeah, let me get back to that. Anyway, so yeah, he pretty much told Hakeem to just, you know, go over there, kiss and make up with her. Mind you, Lucius did call her a thot. He called Tiana a thot. It's like you... You really ain't got no place to be calling nobody no damn thot. But, any but anyway... Um, so they, I guess they kiss and make up or whatever. She introduces India to Hakeem, and so I guess now, I guess the three of them are probably gonna have threesomes or some shit. I don't fucking know. Into anyway, um, yeah, you know they have. I guess they gonna have a threesome or whatever. I don't know. In the near future, they might. I don't know. Again, this is the entertainment industry. People are into a lot of, you know, freaky shit. So y'all go where y'all want to with that. Anyway, um, they kiss and make up, and, you know, they do the video, and it's a good video. I actually like it. It's a, it's a fun, interesting video. To be honest with y'all, the video made me appreciate the song more, so when I do buy the song, you know, 
it's like you have a visual in your head or whatever, if that makes sense. The video made me appreciate the song more. So throughout it all, you know, they did they the the video wraps up and um yeah, the video wraps up and pretty much uh look, Cookie is at her house, you know, she's at her apartment, her hair raw wrapped up and kind of like all over the place because she has been stressed out this entire episode. She just sitting down. She hears a knock at the door. She's wondering who she asks is twice. Who is it? Lucius lets her know it's him. They talk or whatever, and um, they talk, and uh, pretty much he was like, "Oh yeah, remember when they talk about the anniversary and how like you know how it's funny how the tables have turned? Now she forgot that it was their anniversary, and how the first time when he forgot, you know, she threw a stiletto a, a stiletto shoe at him, and um." How she threw a stiletto shoe at him, and what else happened? Oh, yeah. And then she was like, yeah, I remember that. I was mad at you because you forgot, and then um, and then you had went out and stole, and she didn't even finish her line, which, of course, you know, that was written in the script probably, because she realized that back then, Lucius had stole her a bouquet of roses. He stole them from some store. And then he was like, oh, I had left you a gift. I gave you a gift today. Did you, didn't you? did you get it? She then realized that she put two and two together. The rose on, on her doorstep wasn't from, one, wasn't from Frank's guy, Daniel, whatever his name is, Danny, whatever his name is. It wasn't from him. It was from Lucius. And immediately she said, Lucius, you got to get out of here. And he just looking like, wait, what's going on? And it's just like. Like, you know, god damn, like, you know, here's another question. Do y'all think that Lucius knows about Frank Gathers? And then if y if if Cookie were to tell him who she was testifying against, do y'all think that would change how him and her treat each other? Because if he knows of, of Frank Gathers, which he probably does, I'm sure he would probably try to get the best protection for all his family. Even Jamal and Michael, he would probably try to get protection for his entire family. But anyway, um, that's just a question I wanted, wanted to ask and was wondering, do y'all think he would treat her different and, in fact, you know, get security for the whole family? Anyway, um, she calls her sister up real. She calls Carol up. And, you know, it's funny because Carol is in the middle of about, uh, Carol is, you know, with her guy. And, you know, he about to give her some of that good, good, you know, he about to give her some of that. That's what he's about to do. And she pretty much um, was just like called a hit off and she let Cookie know it's too late because their cousin and his boys, they pulled up on that guy. They shot him and they killed him. And pretty much, you know, the episode pretty much takes off from the episode pretty much like it about ends from there because we see Jamal on the rooftop listening to his song. Oh, yeah. Let's backtrack. Uh, pretty much Jamal is at Hakeem's apart apartment and they talk or whatever. And he wants to know did Hakeem set him up not knowing that Andre is the one who really set him up. So, uh, yeah, not knowing that Andre is the one, Andre is the one who complete, who really set him up. And so with that being said, um, yeah, not knowing that, they, that he's the one who set him, set him up. And so uh, not knowing he's Andre and Rhonda are the ones that set them up. And so with that being said, you know, they proceed to fight. And boy, Hakeem, he street fighter. He he gave. I mean, Jamal gave Hakeem one of those street fighter hits. He is like he didn't even have to uppercut his ass. He just gave him one of them hits to the gut. Well, you would have thought that that move came came out of Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat. He just boom like, child. I'm glad that his guts didn't blow all over the, <laughs> blow blow all over the place. Just like boom like it, he gave him one of them hard hits and he just let him know, don't underestimate me. I'm the same person that you come to advice for. Don't underestimate me. And then he walked out. Hakeem immediately called up, called up Andre. And Andre, y'all can tell he was expecting this call. He was like, What's ha what happened? He told him about the whole robbery at the studio with Jamal. And then, of course, Andre going to act concerned, talking about, oh, you know, did something happen? Let me just say this. This is a little pause. Now, had Jamal would have been the one to get shot in his arm or worse, I feel like Andre and Rhonda would have been would have been all would have been halfway to the border by now because they know that they would have been responsible for him getting killed. Like, you know, I get that y'all want Empire, but at what cost? Because it seems like Andre is really willing to let one, if not both, his brothers die. So anyway, you know, 
he Andre said he'll fix it. He will, you know, find some money so they can put Hakeem's video out quickly before Jamal puts his single out. Anyway, um, and then pretty much, you know, I, uh, we see Jamal on the rooftop listening to his song. Hakeem is sitting on the couch trying to get his breath back because he just got, child, I'm telling y'all, he, ha, Jamal hit, Jamal, Jamal hit Hakeem so hard, he took the life out of him. He, Hakeem is trying to recollect his life. He just, boom, like he, boom, like he just gave him one of them hits and it's like, you know, you got Hakeem sitting on the couch breathing heavy like he about to have a damn aneurysm or a heart attack and then, um, you got Andre laying up in bed, and he, and child, we don't even know what's going on in his head, because with Andre, it's a party going on in his head, so we don't know if the lights are on or off up there, and pretty much, you know, yeah, the episode pretty much ended like that, so I hope you guys enjoyed this review, I got it to y'all a day after instead of two days, so, well, two to three days, so I got it to y'all, you know, very quickly, and I hope you guys enjoy this video. Thank you for tuning in. This is Prince Onyx, and yeah, see you guys later.